Hi, I'm David Gerhart with 3Sharp. This video is titled Creating a Simple Custom Approval Workflow for SharePoint Server 2007 using SharePoint Designer 2007. It is meant to supplement the article I wrote with the same title. In this video, I will start with the sample expense report form template that comes with Office InfoPath 2007. I will publish a modified version of that form template to a SharePoint document library, and then I will design a workflow using SharePoint Designer 2007. The workflow will evaluate data that is in the form and then send email messages to the appropriate approvers. For this video, I have already updated the expense report form templates data source. I added the VP name and VP email nodes and updated the form view with text boxes accordingly. And I added a status node and updated the form view with a drop-down list box control. If you want data source nodes to be used in conditions and actions in a SharePoint designer workflow, you have to promote those nodes as SharePoint columns. So from the tools menu, let's click form options and start the form options dialog box. Within the dialog box, click the property promotion category. And then you'll see a listing of all the fields in the InfoPath form that have been promoted as SharePoint columns. In this case, I've already promoted three fields, the manager email address, the VP email address, and the expense report total. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another column, in this case, the employee name. So let me expand the employee group and then click the name node. I can adjust the column name as it appears both within SharePoint and SharePoint Designer. So we'll just add employee to the front of that and click OK. And then these will be the four columns that I will use in my SharePoint Designer workflow. So now I can just go ahead and click OK. I am now ready to publish my expense report form template to a SharePoint document library. So let's start the InfoPath publishing wizard by clicking File and then Publish. In the first page of the wizard, I indicate that I want to publish to a SharePoint server with or without InfoPath form services. So let me just go ahead and click Next. In the next page of the wizard, I indicate the URL where the library is going to be located. In this case, it's a library that exists within moss.litwareinc.com. So I'll just go ahead and click Next. In the next page of the wizard, I'm indicating that I am publishing the form template as a template in a, in a document library. So I'll just click Next. As it turns out, this uh, form template has already been published to an expense document library in moss.litwareinc.com. So I'm just updating the form template in that library. So I click Expense and then click Next. The next page of the publishing wizard lists the form fields that have been promoted as SharePoint columns. A note here, if you wanted one of these columns to be editable by a SharePoint designer workflow, you can double click that column and then select this checkbox down here that allows users to edit data in this field by using a data sheet or properties page. Essentially, that would make the column editable by a SharePoint designer workflow. In this case, we will not do that, so I'll click cancel and in the publishing wizard, click next. In the next page of the publishing wizard, I'll click publish. And then once the publishing process is complete, I'll just click close. With our form template now published, we'll switch over to SharePoint Designer 2007. First thing we want to do is make sure we have the correct site opened. If you'll recall, I have an expense document library that sits on the moss.litwareinc.com site. If you don't have that site open, you can do so from File and then Open Site, and then type the URL of your site in the site name box and then click Open. To start a new workflow, you would click File, New, Workflow, and that will start the Workflow Designer. Within the Workflow Designer, you can specify a name for your workflow. You can identify the list within your site to which you want to attach your workflow. And you can specify start options for your workflow. In this case, you can see that I can select an option to allow the workflow to be manually started from an item. I can have the workflow automatically start when a new item is created or whenever an item within my list is changed. 
For this video, I have already started a workflow and attached it to the expense document library. So in my folder list window, I can scroll down to my workflows folder and then expand my expense report WF workflow. And then within that folder, there's an XOML file. And this is essentially the workflow designer that defines the properties for my workflow that is attached to the expense document library. So I'll double click that. Within the workflow designer, I already have a conditional branch set up for the employee's manager. So when an expense report is submitted, if the report total for that report is less than $5,000, an email message will be sent to, to the employee's manager indicating that there is a report ready for review. For this video, we'll add a second conditional branch specifically for the employee's VP. So first, let's click Add Else If Conditional Branch and then click the conditions list and then click compare expense field. Then let's go ahead and update our condition so that it differs from the first condition. We'll click field and again, we'll find the report total column. In this case, we'll change the uh, operator so that it is greater than or equal to and the value will be 5,000. Then we'll add an action that sends an email message. So click actions, the actions list. If the send an email action doesn't appear, you can click more actions and then select the send an email message action from the workflow actions dialog box. But in this case, it's already in our list. And then go ahead and click this message to start the define email message dialog box. We can look up values from our list items so for the two field, we'll actually click this lookup icon to the right. And then in the select users dialog box, double click workflow lookup. And then in the define workflow lookup dialog box, in the field list, we're actually going to look up the VP's email address and then click OK. And then click OK in the select users dialog box. Then we'll go ahead and type A subject for the message body I'll use a combination of static text and lookups I've got placeholders within my body in this case I have one for the employee name so I'll do a lookup and then actually get the employee name from the column value because I promoted that when I published the form and then I'll do the same thing for the report total And I'll look it up and grab the report total column value. And then click OK. And then click OK. And that's it. The last thing you'd have to do is click Finish. And then you'd have a SharePoint Designer workflow that conditionally sends email messages based on the report total in your expense report form file.